time for overtime. Stop what you're doing and listen. In the world of sports, it's all about the playmakers in today's headlines, from locals to the pros, with interviews from local standouts and sports all-stars across the country that will have you talking. Oh, oh, Hear from coaches, the players, sports analysts, and broadcasters who are a part of the action every day. Overtime, now with Burt Ramin on ESPN 102.3 AM 1000 KSOO, Sioux Falls Sports Leader. Welcome back. It is hour number two of an early edition of Overtime on your Wednesday. We hit the air at 10. We're off the air in about 20 minutes. Making way for Minnesota Twins pregame coverage. 11.30 pregame, 12.10. The start time, game three of the series against the Dodgers. Twins looking to avoid the sweep and notch their first home win of the season. I'm your host, Bert Ramin. Track me down anytime at Bert ESPN on Twitter. And we're going to make our way through this pretty darn quickly because we got an appointment to keep with our buddy Dan Hayes of The Athletic covering the Minnesota Twins. We're going to be talking Twins here in about five minutes on the show. So quickly, what happened last night? What's going on in your headlines? Minnesota Timberwolves got a win. That's what happened last night. 51 points for Anthony Edwards. 130-121. Come from behind fashion over Washington. OKC also won. Denver also won. And we are heating up for quite the finish in the Western Conference in the NBA, Minnesota Timberwolves 55-24. and 24. Same record as Denver atop the Western Conference. OKC still with a shot at the number one seed. They're one game back. Clippers aren't going to get it. Neither are the Mavericks or Pelicans. That's spot four through six. Play-in spots. Suns, Kings, Lakers, Warriors. And that's all she wrote. No movers and shakers out or into playoff contention. Everyone that I just mentioned is in. Those are the teams It's just the order in the seating the rest of the way. Most teams with just three, maybe four games to go in the regular season for the Minnesota Timberwolves. They've got three left. They're through 79 games and the matchup with Denver tonight on the road. Must see TV, 9 o'clock on ESPN. Into your headlines of the day now, head coach Jim Glagowski and the USF Cougar football team on Saturday for their spring preview will host MSU Moorhead at Bob Young Field. Spring preview will begin Saturday afternoon at 2.30 For all you Cougar fans and for all you starved fans of college football, free to all season ticket holders will be able to renew their season tickets on the concourse or by visiting the link in the article, usfcougars.com. Spring preview will be run like a scrimmage. MSU Moorhead in town, USF Cougars. That's coming up on Saturday, 2.30 is the start time. Minnesota Twins have acquired right-hander Michael Tonkin from the Mets for cash considerations yesterday. To make room for Tonkin on the roster, the Twins did play outfielder Max Kepler. On the 10-day IL with a right knee contusion, 34-year-old Tonkin went 0-2 with a 4-5 OERA and three relief appearances this season. His first with the Mets. He allowed eight runs, two earned on six hits over four innings. And lastly here, really quick through your headlines, couple Wisconsin sports news articles, Giannis Antetokounmpo's Left Achilles tendon is fully intact, and the Milwaukee Bucks star's return to play will depend on how quickly his calf strain heals that he suffered last night. Antetokounmpo exited last night's win over the Celtics in the third quarter after crumpling to the floor while grabbing at his left leg. It looked really bad, and it's not as bad as it potentially looked. The Achilles is fine. MRI and further details coming out today as to what the extent of the injury could be, but apparently According to ESPN.com, the Achilles is okay for Giannis, and it remains to be seen how much time, if any, the star will miss. And big news for you Packer fans out there. The NFL has announced that the Packers will face the Eagles in the first ever game in the NFL in Brazil. This season, it'll be played on opening Friday, September 6th. That's the night after the Chiefs host the regular season opener. And the really bad news, it's a Peacock-exclusive broadcast, so certain people Will not be able to watch it. I'm going to work my best to find a way to watch that game. But Friday, opening weekend, Friday, September 6th, blessing in disguise outside of the travel and the increased international exposure. The big news for the Packers is they will have a big rest advantage, presumably in week two. The whole schedule yet to be determined, but Packers, Eagles, it's Bree and it's the Birds in Brazil. Coming up to start the season Friday, September 6th. Can't wait for that. We take the break. Back with Dan Hayes after this. You want more of Overtime? It's all on the podcast. Free with the app or online at ESPN Sioux Falls. Overtime with Burt Ramin on ESPN 102.3 and AM 1000 KSOO. Right back 
back with you on an early edition of Overtime on your Wednesday. Same time tomorrow, Minnesota Twins with a pair of early starts back-to-back. Pre-game coverage begins right here on the Minnesota Twins radio network in now 15 and a half minutes right here on ESPN Sioux Falls. Here to break down the start to the season, some highlights, the up and down play for Minnesota. Dan Hayes, one of our favorites, Twins writer for The Athletic, joins us now on the ESPN hotline. Dan, welcome back. We made it through opening day. We made it through the home opener. How are you getting along these days? I'm good. I'm getting along so much better than this offensive. So, uh, (laughs) And obviously, yes. it's been a mixed bag so far for the Twins. Talk to us a little bit more about the up and down start. I know fans might be a little disappointed. It's way too early to panic, but three and six through the first nine games. What are some highlights and lowlights for you? I mean, Royce Lewis is without question a low light. Unfortunately, he had such an incredible start there, and you know, three innings in. This team was, you know, you mentioned fans. They were disappointed with the offseason significantly. I mean, it, it's all we heard all year was. You know, they win the playoff game. They finally get some good momentum, and then they cut payroll by $25 million or $26 million, wherever it is. Um, a lot of people are disappointed. And so, like, this team was starving for good vibes to start the season. And Royce Lewis hits that home run the first thing. You're like, okay, maybe, you know, this is how it goes. This is good. Because the talent they had here assembled to start the season was really good. And they knew that. And they, even though they reduced payroll as much as they did, they felt confident about the group they had. And then Royce Lewis, on that second trip through, you know, gets injured, and um, it seems like it sapped them of some of that the good vibes right away. And they've been struggling. It has not been the kind of start that they needed um, to maybe turn fans uh, in their favor because it has definitely been, you know, painful to watch with the offense. We're talking about a team hitting a buck 80 as a team right now. Nobody is healthy aside from Carlos Correa, you know, as far as offense goes. There's so many rough numbers out there, and and it's hard to watch games when it's as low scoring as it's been so far. And like you said, it has it's nine games. It's early. We haven't even reached the uh, you know the 16 game mark at 10 percent of the season. You still have a lot to go. And last year, you remember how much this offense struggled. I mean, this was a team that was under 500 at the All Star break. Their offense was terrible. They turned it around with a great second half. They have that capability. And, and you always have to remember it's a long season, but start has been has left more than something to, uh, to desire for sure. Minnesota Twins through the first nine games are three and six. They collide with the Dodgers game three of the series, looking to avoid the sweep and earn their first home win of the season. Coming up here in under an hour on the Minnesota Twins radio network. Dan, we talked about the negatives there. What are a few positives that you've seen? I think it's been pretty cool to see Buxton out roaming around center field, making some plays. What else has stood out outside of Byron? Yeah, I, I mean, Byron, I think that is a huge thing for that, for people to see. Uh, the fact that we didn't see him in center field at all last year. 81 games with a designated hitter. And the other night he gave us a great reminder of what he can do with that diving catch. Um, you know, it, it was one of those incredible Byron moments that we were unfortunately unable to see last year. He feels good. He looks good. His bat will come around. That's not a concern with Twins. Um, he's, he's able to get work in, in the cage right now that he was unable to do at any point last year. He wouldn't take batting practice most days because his knee was so bad. And that's, that's a breath of fresh air for them, for him. Um, but I think the, the other takeaway is look at Carlos Correa right now. You know, he's running fast. The ball he hit out last night, uh, he wasn't able to tap into that power at all last year. Really, he, he did a great job playing for plantar fasciitis and, and getting out there every day and, and basically earning the money that he's getting paid because, you know, most guys would have sat out a, quite a bit of time with that injury. And Carlos basically was like, hey, I'm sort of like the captain here. This is my job. And he, and he handled it as well as you can. But it was clear that he was never right. This year, that hasn't been the case. He looks excellent. Um, his mobility is so much better. But I think the way you see it the most is in his swing and his stance and the things he's able to do with his back foot and his front foot that he just wasn't able to do last year. You know, he wasn't connected to the ground as much as he wanted to be. And he was doing everything he could to play through it, and that hasn't been the case this year. So that's a really good sign for them early on, uh, without question. When your stars are healthy, you know, a lot of good things can be made up for as long as they're healthy and playing well. Minnesota Twins looking for a big game today against the L.A. Dodgers. 12-10 is the start time. Pre-game coverage just over 10 minutes away right here on the Minnesota Twins 
Radio Network. We're talking with Dan Hayes, Minnesota Twins writer for The Athletic. As far as the injuries go, we talked a little bit about Royce Lewis. Max Kepler also on the IL now with a contusion. Uh, what's the broad strokes injury update for the team right now? Um, Yohan Duran is going to throw a bullpen Friday. That's a good sign. Caleb Thielbar pitched last night through a scoreless inning, although it was a little, there was a little traffic in his inning uh, over at St. Paul. Um, those are really good signs, but Royce Lewis is definitely going to be sitting for probably another month at this point. We were at the two-week part right now. Um, I think for him to not have any concerns of, a, of injuring himself again the same way, that it basically is a six-week shutdown period, and that's you know two weeks longer than I think we were initially told. But um, he's basically doing upper body workouts only right now, trying to just stay active and you know not get bored. Um, that's the that's the that's the one that really matters, right? I mean, yep. he's a superstar, a superstar in the making. But I mean, I, I just think he brings so much in energy. Um, Something to keep an eye on is, is where Brooks Lee is. We haven't heard much about that. I know it was a back strain. If he can get healthy at AAA and get a little bit of time under his belt, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him here. He brings a different profile to the offense, more of a hitter, uh, more bat to ball versus a big power guy. The Twins wouldn't hate having that at all. So he's the, the guy to kind of keep an eye on. Max Kepler, I wouldn't be surprised if he's back when the time is up. Um, they weren't very concerned about it in the first place. He just hasn't been able to really get going and, and told them to shut him down. And so I, I think, you know, that was retroactive to April 7th. When the 10 days is up on April 17th, I wouldn't be shocked if he's back here. Maybe maybe a day or two after that. That's the latest injury update on the Minnesota Twins colliding with the Dodgers here. Mere moments away, 40 minutes from game time, and we're 10 minutes away from pregame coverage time, 50 minutes from game time, rather. Dan Hayes of The Athletic is our guest. Dan, lastly, of course, we mentioned it last year when the Minnesota Twins were around 500. I don't think fans were all that panicky because they didn't know what the team could be, but also because the division was not good last year. At any point, there was nobody that really presented a crazy challenge, but so far, so good for the broad strokes of the AL Central because... There's a lot of competition. If you had to pick one team between Cleveland, Detroit, and, of course, Kansas City, all three of those teams out to uh, seven wins or better starts to the season, what team are you taking the most seriously as the big competition in the division this year? Um, probably Detroit. Uh, talk to me when Cleveland plays someone for real. Like uh, yeah. they're, they're fine. Their pitching's okay. But be losing Bieber is just a huge blow to them. Um, they're, they're so young, and... I don't know if they're ready to, to take that step. Uh, Detroit, you know, they went and spent a little bit more. They're probably the team that can be the closest to finishing at 500. But, I mean, look, I, you know, I think the Pittsburgh Pirates were incredible in April last year. I don't think that any of these teams has the long-term consistency. Look at Kansas City's bullpen. It is the guys that came out to try to protect the lead um, in Kansas City when we were there for the first couple of days. I don't know who they are. They, they, and that's not a, they just don't have any kind of profile. And that doesn't mean they can't be something, but usually you have a few more steady names in there. They don't have that. They have a, a good first three in the rotation. That's certainly improved. And their lineup, I mean, Bobby Witt's incredible, and they have Pasquantino back. So there's some, they, they have a good start with what they need. Um, they will, I, I do think all three of these teams, Detroit, Kansas City, and and Cleveland will fight the Twins harder, and the division won't be as bad. But I don't think anybody's really a team that's going to break away and be better than 500. And so what the Twins need to do is find their level. It wouldn't shock me if they get swept today. It's the Dodgers. The Dodgers are playing great. Yep. Last night was Tyler Glassnow's fourth start of the season already. The hmm. Twins, have, this is their 10th game. Um, and they, they've had four off days. There's a chance they're going to get rained out tomorrow in Detroit. They need to just play and find their, their level. They will. I don't sense panic with them. Um, I talked to Eddie Julian just a little bit ago. He's off to a terrible start. And he said, look, my process is good. I just haven't done what I want to do. We're working on it. He need, what Eddie Julian needs is four games in a row, five games in a row. They haven't had that yet. This is the first time all season – or, sorry, this is the second time all season where they've played three days in a row. That's crazy. We're two weeks in as of today, and they have only played three games in a row twice hard to establish a rhythm when you're in those kind of conditions and and i think they'll be fine it's just they need to get over you know 
win a couple in a row. Their pitching's been solid so far. The pitching hasn't been the problem. Louis Varland had a rough game last night, uh, but for the most part, he was good. He made two mistake pitches, and it cost him dearly. I think he learns from that. But you look at how Bailey Ober rebounded, how Joe Ryan's looked, how Pablo Lopez has looked. This is the best rotation in the division. And, and I think, you know, Chris Paddock will show that today. So I, I just think that they are still a, the best of the group, even if it means they win 85, 87 games. I don't think any other team in the division gets there. A little bit of a slow start for the Twins, but everybody around here in these parts rooting for Minnesota. Dodgers today, 12-10, the start time. Great insight and stuff, as always, from Dan Hayes, Twins writer for The Athletic. Dan, until next time, thanks so much, as always, for the insight and hoping for a win today for Minnesota. There you go. Hey, thanks for having me on. Always great to talk baseball with Dan Hayes, Twins writer for The Athletic. Our guests there, moments away from saying so long on today's program, Dodgers and Twins, 11.30 pregame coverage right here, just about five minutes away, and then 12.10 the start time. Other games today in Major League Baseball, Phillies and Cardinals, Diamondbacks and Rockies from Denver, White Sox at Guardians, Brewers at Reds, Cubs at Padres, Astros visit the Royals, that's the slate for our area teams and AL Central teams of note. And one last foray into those division standings right now. It's a lot uh, lot up for grabs, a lot up for speculation. It's way too early. As our friend, one of our favorites, Wayne McDonald Jr. says, don't tell me about anything. Don't write any narratives until after Memorial Day. We're not going to do that. But right now, just delivering the facts, Cleveland. Out to the best start in the division. They are eight and three. Kansas City and Detroit seven and four. Minnesota three and six. And the Chicago White Sox did get a win yesterday. They boost their record to two and nine. Minnesota Twins baseball pregame coverage. Fifteen seconds away, right here on Overtime and ESPN Sioux Falls. We'll talk to you tomorrow, ten a.m. the start time. Once again, until then, have a great day, Sioux Falls. Talk to you later.